Respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV, has been around since the 1960s, and to date there's been no vaccine. But that may soon change. RSV is the leading cause of lower respiratory tract infections, such as bronchitis and pneumonia. Every year around the world, millions of hospitalizations and even deaths are recorded because of it. High at risk are infants who account for nearly half of all fatalities. Now, a vaccine trial has shown some promising results. By inoculating the pregnant mother with an RSV protein vaccine, it's shown that 82% efficacy in reducing the risk of severe RSV-related illness. Let's find out more from Professor Shabir Mahdi, Professor of Vaccinology at Wits University. He was this study's study leader. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Mahdi, for speaking to us this evening. Uh, before we talk specifically about the study and its results, I want to get some context about respiratory syncytial virus. How common is it here in South Africa? Um, and how severe uh, is it generally? What are we seeing at the moment? Yeah, so uh, thank you and thank you for having me. Uh, so RSV, respiratory syncytial virus, in fact, is probably the most common cause of respiratory illness in South Africa, both in adults as well as in children. Uh, right now in South Africa, we're in the middle of our RSV epidemic. Uh, when you go to the hospitals across the country, uh, the hospitals are completely full with children with lower respiratory tract infections with pneumonia, which is caused by RSV. Many people might have been developing respiratory symptoms over the course of the past four to six weeks. And that is not because of COVID. Rather, it's because of this virus that we're experiencing an epidemic. And each in South Africa, uh, this epidemic usually transpires between March until around about uh, end of May, beginning of June. So extremely common. Uh, the majority of children would have been infected at least once uh, by two years of age. 100% of children would have been infected by two years of age. The thing about this virus is that it causes most severe disease in extremes of age. So very young children and people above the age of 65. Uh, amongst very young children, the reason for it is that they haven't developed any immunity against the virus. Uh, people usually develop immunity from infection over the course of their life. Because young children are naive to the virus, uh, they tend to develop very severe disease, especially in the first six months of life. Hmm. So anyone that's got a child, their children have definitely been infected with the virus. Anyone that had a child, whose child ended up in hospital in the first two years of life because of a respiratory illness, highly likely that the reason for that the cause of this virus known as RSV. So because there's no existing uh, vaccine, what has treatment uh, consisted of so far and how successful has that treatment been? Yeah, so uh, there's two parts to it. Fortunately, the virus is, uh, doesn't uh, cause a large percentage of people that are infected to die, which is a positive thing because there isn't any specific treatment against the virus. So the way that we usually keep is what we refer to as symptomatic management. But the majority of cases usually that end up in hospital, which usually requires supplemental oxygen. So in a country such as South Africa, and certainly in urban areas where there's readily access to healthcare facilities, that's not too much of a problem. But where there's limited access to healthcare, if children don't get a supplementary oxygen therapy, unfortunately, then the chances of dying is much greater. But at the same time, each year between 66,000 and 200,000 children would die from the particular virus. In South Africa, roughly about 10% of all children that die from pneumonia in the first uh, five years of age would be dying because of this virus known as RSV. So this study is incredibly important uh, for infant health. Um, the Matisse study was conducted to determine whether immunizing a woman during pregnancy protects her unborn baby against RSV in the months after it's born. Can you tell us um, in layman's language so that we can understand what the findings of this study were? So what we're doing is we're trying to copy what we've done for other viruses, where when we vaccinate these mothers against the uh, pathogen, against the virus, the mother produces antibodies. Now that antibody is then transfers over to the fetus in utero. It crosses the placenta into the fetus. And it is that antibody that passively ends up in the fetus, which then protects the baby for up between three to six months of life. So those antibodies that enter into the fetus, the baby is born with those antibodies, which now, now is able to confer protection after the even in the, if the child is infected for the virus. And that protection usually persists for at least for three to six months because that antibody does decay over time. 
So it's really trying to increase the amount of antibody in the mother, get it passed over to the fetus. So when the newborn uh, arrives, the newborn has got high enough levels of antibody that protects the child from developing severe disease if they are exposed to the virus. And it's a similar approach that we use for influenza and as well as for whooping cough, uh, where we still wanting to vaccinate mothers against those organisms really for the benefit of the mother partly, but more for the benefit in protecting the baby in their first three to six months of life. Mm. Now, we know that these studies um, are, are conducted under incredibly uh, strict conditions. They have to adhere to a, a number of um, both local and international regulations before um, such a vaccination would be made available. Where are we in, in that process? Uh, so the vaccine will very likely be licensed shortly uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, at least in Europe, as well as uh, the United States. I suspect that the vaccine probably would become available in those uh, countries uh, in the beginning of uh, 2024, if not late in 2023. Uh, as to when the vaccines would become available in South Africa and other low middle income countries where the need is the greatest, uh, we're hoping that that transpires over the course, during the course of 2024, 2025. What we can't accept is what has transpired in the past for life-saving vaccines, where there's been a delay of anything between 10 to 20 years between the time when these vaccines become available in high-income countries compared to when it becomes available where the need is the greatest. So I'm fairly optimistic this time around that that period of time will be shortened and that we should see vaccines in a country such as South Africa as early as 2025. But at the same time, it's going to be up to government to ensure that it does what is necessary mm. to get these vaccines into the arms of uh, pregnant women eventually. So this is similar to the discussions we had during COVID, uh, when those uh, initial vaccines became available in high-income countries, and we had lengthy, heated discussions about equitable access to vaccines. We know that a number of South African uh, professionals uh, were involved in, in this study uh, and, and in making sure that the findings would get to a point where the vaccine is able to be licensed in, as you say, now the Northern Hemisphere. Do you think, uh, you've already said you're hoping to see the vaccine available here. Once it is available here in South Africa, how do we get it into the arms of, of the hundreds of thousands of pregnant mothers that need it in those low-income groupings? Yeah. So in South Africa, the majority of children as well as adults that do receive vaccines, we see, we see it through the public sector. Uh, for children, that's received through the immunization clinics. Uh, pregnant women in South Africa do get vaccinated against another disease uh, known as tetanus, and that is again to protect the young infants. It's extremely uncommon in South Africa nowadays because of the success of vaccinating pregnant women. Now, the pregnant women would usually get vaccinated when they're going to antenatal clinics, and that is where this vaccine would need to be deployed. It would be need to be deployed in antenatal clinics. But there is something that we can do in the interim. What we need to do in South Africa, where we've come short already, is that we need to increase the number of pregnant women that receive influenza vaccine and we are all at the start of an influenza epidemic. Because we've shown in the past that when pregnant women receive influenza vaccine, they get protected against influenza, they're less likely to have a stillbirth, they're less likely to deliver preterm, and the babies are then also protected against influenza illness as well as hospitalization in the first three months of life. So we should already start sorting out the logistics by using influenza vaccine for pregnant women. And then when this RSV vaccine becomes available, it will be much easier for us to seamlessly get the women vaccinated both against influenza as well.